Hello and welcome to this taste challenge, mid-morning taste challenge. We have this for Monday slot. Tomorrow morning we'll do Dawn Buses. This will be for Monday slot. Decide to get it done, get it out the way. <laughs> well, actually, I was thinking about that. If I was going to do it tomorrow, I would have to do it while people were watching football and a lot of people wouldn't watch. And uh, same thing today, once the college games start, a lot of people are going to be watching that. So that's understandable. I'm doing it now before those start. Here's Clan McGregor introduced 1934. It has a pretty bottle. Bottle. I bought this so cheap at Walmart. $5. They closed out the glass bottles. They only wanted to sell the handle plastic bottles. I say, well, I'll take advantage of that. And this was... Produced on 115th day of 2017, it says. Imported and bottled in Edison, New Jersey. So it's distilled, blended, and aged in, or aged and blended, depending on what they process they use, process they use in Scotland, but it's actually bottled in the United States. Run you about $10. But I got it for five. <laughs> Five bucks. I say, well, let's go for it. I paid nine seventy nine for the first bottle. Then I bought my daughter a bottle. She didn't like it too much because she said, I don't like scotch. Wasn't that she didn't like this in particular. It's that she doesn't like scotch in general. So it's just going to languish. I said, don't waste the bottle. So I don't think she, she's touched a drop in all those years. It's a shame. Anyway, John Barr blended scotch. Don't know when it was introduced. It says 1881, but that's really when White and McKay started, the White and McKay company who owns John Barr. So some people say this came out in the mid-70s. I've seen no definitive evidence. I've seen photos on the internet of old bottles that look like they were 40-something years old. They used to not be squared off. They were round. Then they had the squared off bottles coming into play. And I saw some old 1979, 1980, 81 magazine advertisements for it. But even the website doesn't say too much about it. They're just saying uh, they don't even talk about John Barr Finest, the red label. It just says uh, carefully selected, expertly blended. Well, you get on any Scotch website or Canadian blended or American blended, doesn't matter. They're gonna say the same thing, how they just expertly blended and so carefully selected from the choicest grains and malt whiskeys. You know, they're gonna say the same thing. For structure and richness and space side varieties, so Highland malt and then space side. So that's what they're saying, they're using Highland and space side. Each component is carefully selected and expertly blended by a third generation master blender whose time honored approach to whiskey making delivers a reserve blend with a distinct and rewarding taste profile. Then they go on about the taste and aroma notes, which I, I do not pick up gingerbread, hazelnut, apricot, baked sweet apple, baked bread, well, maybe bread. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. Then they talk about the white and McKay. Whiskey. Then they go on and talk about White and McKay. That's who's doing it. Okay, but anyway, you can check the website out. I have a link. Clan McGregor. After joining William Grant and Sons in 1964, Clan McGregor has gone on to become a significant player. They use italics, a significant player. In the United States, Russia, Russia, the Russian Federation, the Middle East, and Africa, not Canada, not the United Kingdom or any place in Europe. Well, some places in Europe look like they're showing Spain, southern France, Germany, or the low countries at least, Russia, Arabia, Africa, South America, Taiwan, Ireland, and the Republic of China. Okay. Global travel retail <laughs> does me no good. Now, I joined William and Grant 
William and Grant, William Grant and Sons in 64, but the brand, it doesn't say, notice it didn't say start in 64. The brand's older than that. Now, I don't know who started it in 1934, but 30 years later, it was bought by William Grant and Sons. 15 of Scotland's finest malt and select grain whiskeys from the Scottish Highlands, Lowlands, and the Heart of Speyside. I need to put that in my notes. I need to edit this and put, uses 15 whiskeys have been skillfully blended to create the, the smooth and mellow award-winning, I don't know what awards they want, flavor of Clan McGregor. The result is a high quality, light and fragrant whiskey with a well-balanced, smooth, mellow taste that resonates with whiskey drinkers across the world. Now, I'm not saying I pick up any grain sweetness. Yes, you'll get that. Hints of dry smoke. Yeah, okay. Baked apple. I don't know about the baked apple. They show a nice photo of baked apples. Biscuity, smooth, malty, lingering. Uh, <laughs> Hints of smoke. Yeah, that's true. Well, you can read it. I'll put a link below. Awards. Oh, yeah. What awards? Oh, a lot. <coughs> uh, but nothing in the last five years that they bother listing. So um, you could check it out. All right. I think this is going to be a tie, which means a loss for John Barr because it's 23 bucks a bottle. Clam McGregor, $9.99. Now, if I could get a, a whiskey for $9.99 that rivals a $23 bottle, I'm going $9.99 myself, but that's me. Green bottle helps protect the whiskey from light damage. Brown bottle be the best. Most are not in brown bottles. Most are clear. Some are green. A few are brown. Well, that thing flows out like mad love. And now we got bad blood. You know, so it flows out fast. An achievement of perfection. Uh, yeah, I love these. I love reading these labels. Uh, an achievement of perfection. They don't say it's pretty good. They say it's an achievement of perfection, which means it has no flaws. It's a perfect product. Uh, yeah, really? Got these Diamore glasses. I want to thank the people that gave it to me. Can't say who, but um, I want to get some more. Diamore mini snifters, half size snifters, really convenient. I broke a couple of them. You said, because you were drunk and you didn't know what you were doing. No, because I was washing them. And then invariably, you know, they'll slip out your hand and doesn't even take much to break them. Not like the Glen Karen glasses. Those things, you could break them so fast. It's scary. All right. Light straw, really. Well, it looks kind of gold on video, but it's light straw. This one is darker. It's darker, darling. Amber. All right, so I, I can't look. So if you want to buy Clan McGregor, then shop around. Shop around. Shop around. Shop around. Um, the tree is so full of fruit. I saw somebody picking fruit had a ladder. I mean, they would have to have an extension ladder to get to the top. It'd be very dangerous. She was picking some, but I think she got a whole bag full and she gave up. 90% of it's still on there. It's in, it's the tree is drooping from all those um, whatever those things are called. They're orange. They're not oranges. They're like an orange type fruit. But this is a street full of fruit trees. <laughs> and pecans. All right. I can never get to the ones in my backyard. The squirrels eat them up. They always always see the squirrels taking them because they want to save them, I guess. What they do is they'll dig holes and hide them. 
then they'll come back later and get them. I don't know how they can remember where they put them, but they got some fixation on hiding nuts. That smells very mild, very mild, but there's some grain, yeah, a grain burn on the nose a little bit. Mm-hmm. But I remember the clam McGregor, McGregor, okay, McGregor having kind of a funky old wood, like an old wood cabinet or something smell. Just like this, just like this. A strange compost, but it's mild, but it's a garden compost in a old wooden cabinet. No varnish, no paint, just the old wood. It's weird, isn't it? But very clean, very clean. You might think, oh, $9.99, it's going to be dirty, nasty, horrible, and filth, trash, garbage. Wrong, 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 and wrong. It's really nice. If I was going to drink scotch just to drink it, and I wouldn't because I never do that with any whiskey, but if I was going to, I think I would grab, grab Clan McGregor. That would be my go-to. Why? Cheap and tastes good. People ask me, what's your go-to beer? I don't really have one. I've just been buying Keystone Ice lately. Why? It's cheap. It tastes good. <laughs> but the sales are not happening right now, so I'm going to shop around. And then shop around. I'll find something else. Or I'll go back to, you know, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. But somebody said on, on YouTube, I hope that's not true about Keystone Ice. I said, it's definitely true. <laughs> Okay, taste. Well, I'm going to reveal it. This is the John Bar. It's going to say JB. I know it right now. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. So I'm going to take the tags off. Don't need them no more. Got to make new tags for the brandy coming up starting tomorrow morning, God willing. So what exciting brandies do I have? Well, Ceramy XO, which is lovely. And I'm going to put it up against Saint, uh, uh, Martell BS and then Martell Blue Swift. The Blue Swift fell out my hand today. I lifted up. Something wrong with the cap. It's defective. The cap is defective. So when I went to lift it up, it just fell out of the cap and the bottle fell over onto the counter and started spilling whiskey out on the counter. I said, look at this here. A few drops. A few Made a little puddle. I had to wipe it up with the towel. I said, that's sickening. I didn't buy Blue Swift to, to waste. It, it wasn't like a giveaway. It was $6.99 for the small bottle. Wasn't me being careless. It was just the, the, the defective cap. And then, uh, so we're going to do that. The Blue Swift uh, is Martell, real old, the oldest cognac house, aged and finished in bourbon barrels. And then we're going to do Saint, Brandy St. Louis and Corbell. I like Corbell, but I can only find it at one store around here. Okay. The mystery is solved. I know which is which, but I knew that right off the bat. So let's just go with the taste challenge. I already know what they are <laughs> by virtue of the smell test. Daryl says, cheers, Ron. Enjoy your Saturday. You too. And I might do some, I was talking to David. We might do some duo reviews. Mm. I told him I have the Samuel Adams Harvest Pumpkin Ale. I couldn't resist buying it. He never had it. He said, oh, okay. He was saying, I'm tired of some, not Samuel Adams. What am I saying? The uh, Blue Moon. He said, I'm getting tired of Blue Moon. I said, well, you, I never did. I, I don't really like wheat beers, but. I said, but I'm talking about the Blue Moon varieties. Those are always nicer anyway. The Harvest Pumpkin Ale, the Mountain Abbey Ale, that red ale that they make sometimes. Those are the really good ones. Nice. Look forward to those. Yeah, it'll be posted. I, I'm so backlogged. It might be posted in a month. <laughs> Two weeks at least, I guess. Got such a backlog. All right. So that tastes nice. A little smoke. Well, not too much. A little
if you're saying, I want an intensely smoky whiskey, well, don't pick John Barr. It's mildly smoky. It isn't intense. It's very balanced, pleasant, nice. Okay, Clan McGregor. I noticed by drawing it in my mouth, it was oily. Can't explain it. See, the thing about the Clan McGregor, it has a very bready character. Bread dough, don't you know? And that's coming from the single malts, the Highland and the Speyside. Smokiness. Oh, well, no. No. Old cabinet wood, wax, like candle wax. What's so nice to me that you might think? I like the grain. I like the grain. I want more grain. Uh, but to me, the, the grain whiskey, the grain spirits are, are muted. They're there, but they're they're smoothed out. They're rounded out. Don't know why. The rough edges are taken off this. There's no sharp, bitey, bitey notes on it. No. No, 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 no. No smoke. I mean, you can just throw that out the window. Peatiness. Well, Petey was a pit bull. Um, it's marginal. Morning, y'all, says Julie. Jules. Hello, Jules. Morning to you. Um, Ron, she says, Ron, I invited Jules to uh, Alcohol Eggs on Facebook, but she didn't join. But, you know, I invite people to Alcohol Eggs. Everybody doesn't want to be in a, a, they say, not another Facebook group. I understand. I understand. Believe me, I understand because people are always inviting me to groups and I never join because I'm so busy focusing on focusing on Rock and Roll Club because I want to listen to everybody's songs. And then then. uh And somebody posted their own version of, uh, oh, man, some old rock song. I can't remember the band. I was listening to it thinking, why are you doing this? But I didn't say a word, but I just listened to it start to finish. I say, well, hey, he wants to make these songs. I listened to it from start to finish, and I thought, oh, yikes. But, hey, I'm not making any music, so I, I listened to it. All right. But then alcohol eggs. So those two groups keep me busy. So they're always inviting me. Why don't you join my beer group? I said, well, I'm not going to contribute anything. You know, there's no point to it. There are a few groups I'm in, but I never contribute anything. I'm just except for except for Beer Drinkers United. I'll post a link to my videos and they like it. But I mean, there's really no interaction, but. I just don't have time. I just, I keep up with alcohol eggs, which people are always posting interesting things. They always post interesting things in alcohol eggs. I'll admit that. Interesting articles. Sometimes they'd be arguing a little bit, but it's usually never nasty. And, uh, and then of course, rock and roll club, people post good music, sometimes horrible music, but I'll listen to it all. And if it's terrible, I don't say anything. I'll just be like, Oh, I never heard that before. Now, if they press me on it, it, it could be trouble, you know, but um, I'm pending now. Support alcoholics. Oh, I had taken you off the invite because you didn't accept it. I didn't want to pressure you. I don't, I don't ever pressure anybody, but you can reapply to join, you know, but I don't pressure people to join. No. And honestly, you should not join if you're not interested and don't feel like some, uh, well, we're friends on Facebook, so I'm obligated to join. No, 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 no. Nope, nope, nope. She said, I cannot tell a lie. <laughs> All right, so um, I just started that group just as a area for people that are interested in beer, wine, and liquor to get together and talk about the products. There's not much else about it. Um, 
it's really not a troublemaker group. Troublemakers don't really hang around long. They don't get any attention, so they just quit. You know, people are, they, they just don't feed into their antics, so they, they move on and bother some other group. Same thing with rock and roll club, you know, if they don't get attention, they leave. I'm talking about the bad attention, you know what I'm saying? Just had a rough week laughing out loud, right? Laughing out loud. All right. Um, Jules is a, she, she, she participates in many hangouts and um, she's a good follower. I don't, I do not participate in many hangouts, mainly for two reasons. First reason, they use it, they use they're usually on late at night and I'm sleeping. Secondly, I'm so busy listening to beer reviews. Like I got all these Jacko lined up. I wanna hear what people are saying about a particular beer, like say Jacko from Samuel Adams. Well, I don't wanna sacrifice listening to those and I'm not against hangouts. I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not. I, I, we do, I do multi Monday and I do wild card Wednesday and a style Sunday. Well, that's enough. <laughs> All right. But they all do hangouts all during the week, all the time. I don't sleep much. I can't help it. <laughs> well, I, I don't sleep, but about six to seven hours a night. But I do like to sleep when I'm tired. Uh, so. And they'll do these hangouts. They'll be drinking one beer after the other. Well, I will drink four beers on my day off the whole day. I'm talking about in a 24 hour period, four beers. They, they might drink four beers in, in an hour and a, in 20 minutes. You know, that's my whole day. It's a lot. Man. They're just going three or four hours. So I think I'd be very sick. Um, so they just go. They're hard hitters. You know, those guys are I'm a lightweight compared to their, their major beer drinkers. You know, they're not playing against someone about that, you know, rolling with vodka. I say I can handle it. Um, I could drink water, you know, coffee, whatever. Uh, back to this. I think the Clan McGregor is the winner by virtue of it's cheaper by over half, you know, over double. It's over twice as cheap. And secondly, um, it's not a real huge difference in quality or enjoyment level. The international enjoyment units are high for both. Uh, John Barr, uh, It's got the smoky quality. So I do like the smokiness and um, I appreciate it. And that would attract me. Okay, the smokiness. More sirens. On the other hand, on the other hand, this nice waxy, uh, oily, um, slight composty quality is attractive as well. It's mellow, it's mild. It's not off-putting in any way. And you could save a good $14.50 a bottle buying this versus the John Bar. And that adds up $14.50 every time you make a purchase. I think you would have to go with the Clan McGregor. Now, let's say for every five bottles you buy, you could buy one John Bar and four Clan McGregors. Then buy one John Bar and four Clan McGregors. Do it on that pattern. And I think it'd be a great benefit because with the John Bar, you get the nice smokiness, a little more robust, robust product. And then with the Clan McGregor, it's more mild and mellow, but yet has those little intricate qualities. And when I say little, I mean the qualities are intricate, but they're not loud, bursting, uh, 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 uh. overt. They're more like covert. Mm, I like that, 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 that bread dough. Yes, yes, yes. So would highly recommend both. Clan McGregor really for $9.99 a bottle is the secret weapon of the splendid Scotch whiskey world. It's the secret weapon. I think it really can compete. It can really strongly compete against anything $25 or less. Now you get above 25. Well, I suppose Clan McGregor isn't going to make it, but any any scotch 25 or below, it's gonna go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them and, and and win sometimes. 
especially by default. Even if it ties, it wins because it's so much cheaper. So a great victory. I would have to get the victory to Clan McGregor today because of the uh, pretty enormous price difference, $14.51. Uh, I'm sorry, $14.50, exactly $14.50. You can't overlook that. I mean, you can, but I wouldn't. Uh, so there you go, the winner. But John Barr is still mighty fine. I love this olive green bottle. Man. I just can't, I just love looking at this olive green bottle. It's, yeah, it's just great. Um, so this was one of those approach approach conflicts. Either way you go, you're winning. It's just that with Clan McGregor, you're winning a little bit more because <laughs> you're bringing in the price consideration. So thank you for watching this video production. Tomorrow morning, we're going to get into a different, we're going to pivot into a different, much different area. And that'll be brandy, French brandy versus cognac, French cognac brandy. Uh, and I think, I think, I don't know. I really don't know who's going to win. Is it going to be the San Remy XO, which is $16.99? Or is it going to be the Martel? VS, which is going to run you about $24.99. So now we're looking at about an $8 difference. $8. Uh, is Martel really $8 better? Hmm. Good question. Don't know. We'll find out tomorrow morning at dawn. <laughs> Showdown at dawn. Uh, yeah, more political videos. I keep thinking about doing them, but I never do it. All right. All right. Uh, Julie says, sounds like a win-win. It is. Clan McGregor, I or A. Yes. It's now Sand Beach says it's 7 a.m. And I'm watching Scotch videos. <laughs> Indeed, a true Scott would agree. Of course not. Save the high price whiskey for special occasions. Uh yeah, I don't really do that because I'm always taste challenging things at an endless clip. So you know, it just doesn't have uh, more political videos. I would like to do some more. Um, I just keep delaying it. It's no, there's no good excuse. There is no excuse. So um, that's it. So get ready for brandy. Going to do some brandy, and I'm so randy for the brandy. <laughs> and um, after that, it's going to be a long, relatively long exploration in gold rum and some age and, and yeho. I've got the very intriguing, and I think it's very intriguing, Ronrico gold label. I thought it was going to be junk, but it isn't. It is not junk. It is not junk. No, 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 no. Uh, at least on the initial taste, it was very good. The initial, uh, you understand, initial taste. Now, how's it going to do in taste challenges? My assumption is it's going to do very well. Could be wrong. We'll see. Starting uh, say Thursday morning, if that goes into play. Yes, Thursday the 22nd. A lot of rum. Get ready for rum, the rum diary. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching this video production.